solo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is my supreme pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Folk, Michael Stock. And what a pleasure to, to have a chance to play by myself and not have to worry about keeping up with your eccentric timing, Mr. Stock. Thank you very much, Mr. Poe, and welcome to New Traditions. New Traditions <laughs> is the program we present every week here on cable television, broadcast out of the Anna Breno Mayo Telecommunications Center in Dade County, uh, bringing you local personalities and uh, the folk form. And my name is Michael Stock, and my co-host here is Edgar Allan Poe IV, mm. taking the George Harp solo all by himself. Very good. I have to apologize for uh, you know for crack cracking up there, Mike. But when uh, when we've got a real banjo player on the show <laughs> and he's wincing and he's uh, you know he's, he's, he looks like he's in pain, it's uh, it's hard to keep a straight face and it's hard to play the jaws harp when you're laughing at the same time or even smiling. It's it's difficult. Well, uh, since you started, I'll, I'll introduce our banjo player. Oh, on right. today's guest well, is Michael Ayers. Hello, Michael. How you doing, guys? Yeah. Michael Ayers is a banjo player as well as a, a flute player and also a dance caller, and uh, we'll find out about his organization, the Everglades Old Time Dancers. Hmm. Also on the program is Bobby Ingram. Bobby is a folk singer with, with great roots. He's also very active in the uh, uh, community here with the Dolphin Project. Hello, Michael. And we'll find out more about that in just a moment. First, I want to go back to our, our regular segment <coughs> of our t-shirts. I'm wearing a t-shirt today, if you could get that. It's the opening of the Miami River Bridge, and it uh, was on April 1st, 1986. Kind of an old shirt. But it was a point ten k run, and for those people who are into <laughs> metrics, you know it's, it's about a hundred yards long, I imagine. So I like to show it off. Alan, what's your shirt to say? Well, I've got your basic uh, Aborigines in a boat shirt. Here we are. It's uh, it's from Australia. Very actually. pretty. Yeah, Very not that I went to Australia, but somebody all I got was the shirt, but somebody went and got it for me, and uh, yeah, a little more colorful, a little more interesting than yours, I think. You've got a rather That's drab a nice one shirt. today. Nice shirt. But yeah. we're, we're, we'd yeah. like to wear any shirt we can, actually. So please send in your shirts. We'd like to advertise, promote, or show off your arts organization or your, your business or, or festival. or Whatever shirt you'd like us to wear, we'd be happy to wear it. Just send it at the address you see at the end of the show. Mm. Mm. And, and uh, any news brief, for Alan? Any? Thing you'd like to mention? <clears throat> well, there is a there is a news briefing that uh, you and I. Well, I guess the biggest the biggest news lately is that poor Mr. Stock has been injured. That's yeah, right. The old football right. injury acted up again, and uh, so he thought I wasn't doing enough on the show. You know, being uh, just a second banana. So aside from being his co-host now, I'm also his chauffeur. I had Alan uh, pick me up this morning at the tri rail mm -hmm. station and. You can't even rely on him to do that. He was late picking me up. What can I say, Mike? I'm not. I don't go downtown very often, and uh, I was just struck. I was. In, I, I was. You know. There. All of a sudden, I saw these movies. Twenty-five cents to see a movie. I thought that is too cheap. Dang, that's cheap. I have to check this out. So well, I did, and uh, it turns out that it was only. It's only twenty-five cents to watch part of the movie. You only get to see a little bit, and then you have to. So you know, ten dollars later, I was uh, I was running a little. Well, late. what was the theme of the movie, Alan? Well, it's you know one of those artsy films, you know, like the ones they show on Bravo or public television. You know, those artsy kind of foreign type films. Not a lot of dialogue. Well, we'll have to pursue um, this. Later. I think it was Erotic Adventures of Candy. Actually, was the name of this. Okay. I think Ber Bergman directed it. I'm okay. Sure it well, thank Swedish. you for thank you, Alan, for mm. that insight to your personality. Mm. To our guests, Michael Ayers is in the studio. Hello, Michael. 
How you doing again, guys? Good, good. So you're with the Everglades Old Time Dancers. Yeah. I, uh, what is that? Well, they're a uh, nonprofit organization, and we hold dances once a month down in Kendall. We're starting to have them on the first Saturday night of every month uh, down at the Kendall Crossings Dance Center. And uh, I think later on they're going to have something on the program here where they'll show an address and a phone number you could call. Now, I made a mistake one time when I, I you do something called contra dances and... and, and yeah, they're called contra dances. Contra dances. I once made a mistake in calling it a square dance, and someone got mad at me. Well, what's the difference? What, what, you don't like being called square dancing. Well, we do square dancing. There's nothing wrong oh, with that. Oh, you do? Yeah, we oh. do squares, old southern squares. Uh, basically, it's a, uh, it's a different type of square dancing than what people are, seem to be familiar with. There's not a... We like to say that you don't have to um, have a partner. It's a social event. You don't have to wear any uniforms, and uh, you don't really have to know what you're doing. So you, so you guys ought to go along. Well, that sounds but, uh, great. I, <laughs> well, Mr. Stock, didn't you say you injured yourself? You re-injured that old football injury well, dancing? Uh, yeah, I had right? a, Alan had to pick me up today because I injured it dancing. What mm. sort of dancing were you doing? I was at a wedding, at a Hava Nagila. That'll do it. <laughs> do you, I don't suppose you do it's Tricky those, steps uh, in that I one. don't call Hoppin' Good Dealers yeah, or whatever right. you call Well, you are a, a dance caller. I was wondering means, about that. Uh, Does that mean that you call up other, where there's other dances in town, you call them up on the telephone? And no, they, not quite. Hey, how's it going? Is there, you're, you're, you know, you're getting a lot of people there? Uh, we, we are. Big we, cover charge? What's the... No, okay. The, we charge $4 admission to it, and uh, we, get a, we get a sort of a younger crowd, too, which is nice, but there's a... It, it's a it's a real extension. These are the type of dances um, from squares, line dances, Virginia reels, and stuff. Where it's a social event. They're real mixers, and uh, so what you'll have oftentimes is uh, you'll ask a young lady to dance, and that may be the last you see of her in that particular dance. You're going to mm. end up dancing with everybody else, though. Mm. So uh, it's not unusual to see. Um, seven-year-old girls dancing with 80-year-old men. Yeah. Well, no, what I was wondering, but the dance calling is what I was wondering about. You, do you call, I mean, you call up the other dances, or what does well, that the mean? Well, the dance call calling is uh, you walk people through the dance, and then I'll stand there, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak into a microphone and tell the people oh. what to do. Ladies chain, Alaman left your partner back oh, the ground, right and left all the way around. Hmm. The so it's not like you're calling on the telephone promenade. other day. I see. No, not quite. Okay. Well, I was <laughs> confused. I was like, well, Mr. Stark, you should enlighten me. But yeah, dance calling, is that, is, that's a, a special talent you have. Is it, how did you learn how to call dances? I danced a lot. Uh -huh. I danced a lot uh, in, down here. We started the dances uh, about three years ago. It started by a fellow named Bob Stone and his wife, Judy. And uh, I started out as a musician playing uh, for the dancers themselves, and then they were short men one time. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, if you ever want to meet young ladies, this is a great oh, place to go. They're right. always short men to dance for some reason. Mm, sure. They have a lot of short men there? <clears throat> no, <they're laughs> there's always a shortage of men to oh, dance. Oh. Let me rephrase I that. Mike and I were pretty tall. Maybe we should. Yeah. Well, that sounds good to know. So it's, uh, it's a, actually a single place, too. It is. It's a great place to meet folks and stuff and generally just have a good time. It's patterned after old dances that used to happen back in the pioneer days. And People needless to say, that you do it to live music. That's correct. We have a lot of local string bands and uh, traditional music bands like Wild Harp, an Irish band that locally plays, and uh, Homegrown String Band uh, joins us a lot. The Tasmanian Devils String Band. They play old time music, and it's a it's a real good time. Now, Michael, let's be honest here. Aren't you in all those bands? Aren't you I'm in one of them. Oh, you're only in one. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't play with them while I'm calling, so they don't play too often. I know them all. <laughs> well, tell me about the string band. I'm curious about the string band. It's an old-timey string band. Uh, well, the homegrown string, string band. band I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll talk about them. They're yeah. they're a um, they're that's consisted of the Cox family. Uh, a fellow named Jerry Cox and his two daughters, Regina and Amy. Uh, Amy Cox is uh, 15 years old now, I believe, and she's a uh, Florida State champion fiddler at the time. Do they just do instrumental music, or do they sing? No, uh, they do a lot of singing they stuff. Do. Uh, when we when they're doing an actual dance, they'll do a lot of. Uh, we'll do nothing but instrumentals. Mm. It's just rhythmic, rhythmic music. Mm. It's the time of the program now where we ask our guests to please play an original tune. Since we are called New Traditions, we ask for something traditional but yet new. Do you have something that you could share with us? Well, sure, oh, sure. I'll play you a song. I, I wrote in the summer of uh, 85, and this is called uh, Yankees in the Southland. Well, you know, Mr. Stock, he's a banjo player, too. I, as brought, I have yeah. my banjo here with yeah. me, Michael, if yeah. you don't mind. Uh, maybe it's not the right key, and uh, maybe it's a... This, uh, this is a crooked tune, too. <clears throat> okay, uh, okay, I can Where take it. Were you saying something about Mr. Stock uh, not being quite in tune there, or even by himself, or the banjo? Uh, no. I don't... Well, I think we didn't notice. <laughs> the other way. <laughs> 
Okay, what, what, this is a Yankee... Yankees in the Southland. Yankees in the Southland. Don't ask me why I call it that, I just call it that. Nice. I, I, I kind of forgotten, you know, listening to you for so long, Mr. Stock. I, I sort of what, it, what it really did supposed to sound like. Yeah. <clears throat> do you do any ragtime numbers? Any, any, any rag? No, I do sure do don't. Rag? No, uh, this is a style for people. Uh, that, listen, for listeners interested in uh, old time dances, there'll be an address at the end of the show that you could contact Michael Ayers and the Everglade Old Time Dancers. Our next guest is Bobby Ingram. Hi, Bobby. Good morning, Michael. Bobby's, uh, for those people who know folk music, they should know you. You've been around for a long time. You've had a, a, a I know, you've recorded a little bit, and you're still in the uh, entertainment business today, kind of like on the side line. But you're here also talk about the Dolphin Project. A little bit, yeah. What is the Dolphin Project? It's about the Dolphins? Remind me, you're gonna get the Miami Dolphins? Miami Dolphins? Dolphins? Miami Dolphins? I didn't know we had a... Well, since we're, we're going to kick off with that, uh, the, the Dolphin Project was started in 1968 by, uh, by Rick O'Barry and... Uh, a few people from the Grove, Dr. Henry Truby, and uh, uh, it was a spin-off from, uh, from the filming of some of the TV shows that involved dolphins in those years, and, and Rick was one of the trainers. My wife was one of the trainers of the dolphins at the, uh, in the old Seaquarium days, and out of that grew a consciousness about, uh, about dolphins, and over the years, uh, we, we had uh, benefit concerts where we raised money. We bought a few dolphins out of captivity and set them free, and, uh, and uh, I see Rick almost on a daily basis. He's, a, he's another Groveite, and we're practically neighbors. And we've been friends all these years. And uh, he's currently involved in a in a lawsuit against the United States Navy because they brought some Atlantic bottlenose dolphins out to Seattle, Washington, and put them in a in an alien environment. And it's alien to them, certainly. It's a it's a colder climate of water. And uh, basically, what's happening is that uh, Rick recently got some information from me uh, through the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, of dolphins in captivity, and he, he showed me the other day just pages and pages of, of uh, names of dolphins, and about every other one was 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 just uh, penciled out, and they were they were dead, and uh, so it's it's becoming a case of, of, of disposable dolphins for a disposable society, and uh, I would love to uh, in another venue bring Rick on and have him talk about it some more. He was mentioned in the Miami Herald the other day about this lawsuit, but. I've always been involved with that. I've always helped him organize the concerts. We used to do concerts at the Coconut Grove Playhouse. We took the thing as far as Japan in 1977, where we did the first ecology benefit in, uh, in Tokyo. Mm. It was the first time musicians came together and played for free in Tokyo. The Japanese uh, had never had anything like that happen before. We took 140 people to Tokyo well, and played. It was, it was a neat thing. So uh, we're trying to keep it going in um, Box 224 Coconut Grove. Okay, well, well, we'll ask the uh, listeners if they'd like more information to contact us here at Cable Tap, but that's, uh, that's kind of serious. I didn't want to get too serious. Okay, because, uh, well, you <laughs> said Dolphin Project, and that's what I was talking about. Well, you also into I've folk been, music. You, uh, well, I was, I've, always been, I've always been around the folk scene since, uh, since the early days in Miami, that is to say the, the early days of the first, uh, 
first folk revival in the 60s. Uh -huh. Now, uh, you were directly involved with some of the folk clubs in Coconut Grove, uh, I guess, in the, in the 60s or 70s. Yeah, I was a co-owner of some of the first, first well, well, the actual first club place called the Coffee House over on, uh, to my knowledge, the first folk coffee house on Douglas Road in 1962. Vince Martin, myself, a comedian named Al Mamlet, opened it and, uh, gee, an awful lot of wonderful people passed through there now, over the years. It's my impression that you you weren't there to make money, but just to have a good time. Is that is that correct? Well, unfortunately, it is correct. <laughs> we uh, you succeeded in we that didn't, too. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't need money in 19. Coconut Grove was a different place in 1962. It was a neighborhood. It uh, it's become a theme park, as I've mentioned in the past. But it's uh, it's different now. I it's, it's just not the same somehow. You know, nobody knows what the theme is, but maybe someday they'll all tell us. So when was it that you? became, uh, you, you left the music behind and became a serious uh, money winner, a bread winner. A bread winner? Well, I, I've always made a living. I made a living playing music in those years. It wasn't much of a living, but like I said, we didn't require much. But I guess I, in the early 80s, I, I, I had my last band, I guess, and uh, by that time it had evolved into, into rock. We used to play down at Monty Trainers at the, down at the Bay Shore, down in the Grove, and, and I kind of drifted into the tech side of thing. I think when I met you was during the... Uh, one of the concerts that you did over at the Colony Theater. And, uh, and then we got to know one another, you know, with me doing some lighting and some sound for you with Sue Kai and some of those people. And, uh, and yeah. out of that grew an interest in, in, in playing again. I've been listening to your radio show for uh, at least two or three years now. So, oh, thanks, Bobby. Nice plug. It's but, the only station I can get on my radio, so yeah. <laughs> on Saturday afternoon I get you too. Oh, thanks. No, I like your show, Michael. I've, uh, you've done a lot for, for folk music in Miami. I wish we had more of those kinds of things happening. In He's not days. Mr. Folk for nothing. No, he isn't. No. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But, and, uh, so right now you're, you are, well, how serious, right now you want to get back into the music? No, or? You never really leave the music. I'm, I'm, I'm currently working at the Parker Playhouse with the sound guys up there. We're doing Annie Get Your Gun, and I play the guitar when, when the spirit moved me. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I've done some things at the Folk Club. I'm doing a thing at the Folk Club over on the beach in May. I'm doing another one up in the Folk Club in, uh, in, uh, in Broward with Robbie at the, what is it, Nathaniel's, Nathaniel's. up on the New River, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, I hope it's, we'll it's nice to see that it's still, it's still happening, you know. Yeah, well, we need some more energy like you. You, you seem to be like a wealth of knowledge from uh, your experience back... Uh, it's hard to shut me up, isn't back it? Back when. Yeah, let's have him play <laughs> something. Right? Yeah, shut up and play some music there, Bobby. Do you, do you write many songs? Do you have a lot of original tunes? I have a few, but I was ne I, 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 it wasn't what I did, you know. As a, as a main stroke, you know, I used to play, I most, mostly played other people's songs. There was some, you know, when we were doing it in those years, there was an awful lot of nice material around. But uh, let me do one by Michael Smith. You've played Michael's records on, the, uh, mm -hmm. on your show. And He's now living, Michael Smith now lives in Chicago. Michael in Chicago or Detroit or some other place equally ridiculous. I don't know why uh, he chose that part of the country. I'm, I mean, after living in the Grove, it would be hard for me to... Oh, but he, he used to... But, uh, but Mike was in the Grove for a long time. He used to long, live long in the Grove. Time. Mike was one of the earliest guys on the scene down here when, when Buffy St. Marie and Crosby and Tom Rush and Freddie Neal and all those people were down here playing so in the coffee So Coconut houses. Grove used to be a happening place in folk music, huh? Oh, oh it, was, it was part of the circuit. There was a circuit with Greenwich Village, Coconut Grove, uh, Old Town in Chicago, Los Angeles, if I you could that. get that far. Uh, Joni Mitchell used to play at the Gaslight down in the Grove. Uh, Tom Rush was a real regular. Josh White, uh, Josh White came to town. What times? Remember one time Simon and Garfunkel came to town and played at the old Gaslight in the Grove. And uh, it just, it was where it, you know, it was a great place to come in the winter. It was a great place to <laughs> come down here in the winter. Uh, ten, uh, ten bucks a night and all the coffee you could drink. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could, sometimes I wish I could, sometimes I wish I could steal away, and if I only could, you know I'd do it today. Sometimes I wish I could, wish I could steal away. Sometimes I wish I could, sometimes I wish I could, sometimes I wish I could kneel and pray, and if I only could, you know 
I would not delay Get down on my knees and pray now Sometimes I wish I could Wish I could kneel and pray And if I only I would witness to my loss Sometimes 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 I wish I could Sometimes I wish I could Sometimes I wish I could steal away And if I only could You know I'd do it today I would steal away now Sometimes I wish I could Wish I could steal away I would steal away me a little scared there for a second when you were saying I wish I could remember the words I thought oh my goodness we should have gotten him in his prime he's been so long and he's forgotten that he's forgotten the he's words he's forgotten the, the words the memory's the second thing to go Edgar <laughs> you see you had, a, good. you had a, a good time singing do you have any reg regrets as far as not pursuing your musical career no I don't have any regrets I'm still I'm still music is folk music was for it never it was never really supposed to be a commercial thing now was it I mean other than I mean, we weren't supposed to make uh, millions of dollars. It was, you know, something that's, that's, that I think is really missing from life, you know, as I know it around the Grove or South Florida, if you will, and maybe some of these contacts will, will, will change that. But people used to jam all the time. People used to get together on the front porches and in, in these funky little cottages, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and play music together just, just for, the, for, the, for the fun of it. People, uh, uh, it's funny, I, I work an awful lot of rock and roll shows. I, at the old Sportatorium and up at the Sunrise Theater and any place, they, Night Center, wherever they do rock shows. And the one thing that's distinctly absent is jamming. People don't jam in rock and roll. The, uh, the only jamming band I can think of is the Grateful Dead. Everything is so formatted with the lighting, and if you're not on your mark when you take your solo, you're not going to get caught in the spotlight. So it's not like it's not a free form. It's, it's, it's very, very formatted. It's very, it's very rigid, really, when you think about it. Yeah. And, uh, that's what we that was, That's a good that point. Was, that was what it was all about, was, was jamming and, and, and getting together and playing music for the sheer fun of it. And out of that came this phenomena, you know, and then at the, at, the, at the critical moment, the Beatles came on the scene, and I remember playing at the old Flick Coffee House with David Crosby when we were, we were still doing a duo thing in those years and, and, uh, and discovering that a lot of the stuff that we were playing around with, chord changes that we were playing around with, were a lot like the things that the Beatles were playing. And... Uh, Next thing you know, David went back off to California, and it was the birds, and there was this, this incredible thing happened, and people dumped gallons of money on people. You know? That's incredible. It's, uh, and, and you were there. Bob and I was you? there, and I'm still here. You're still here. <laughs> and I'm not one of the casualties, and I survived the whole thing. So you, do you get a chance to jam much anymore? Well, I have friends that come over. We hang out. Uh, Gee, Mr. Stock, maybe this is our opportunity. This is yeah, it. We, yeah, uh, we, we have our jam. instruments here. We can jam. We could all like jam. Sure, we can. Uh, no. Oh. No. Well, that's it? why there's no jamming anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael Ayer is I'm, I'm sure with the I'm sure with the dances that's all jamming or is it you do a lot of jamming there? Yeah, there there's a there's a couple of places in town that it goes on. Uh, I know that the uh, the Folk Club of South Florida has some uh, jams that go on over Fuchs Park uh, pretty regularly and um, there's a uh, there's a lot that happens at the banjo shop on Wednesday nights up in Hollywood. Uh, for traditional music of this sort, instrumental stuff, and uh, old-time singing tunes. I was at a uh, conference recently, and they coined a term called the slow jam. That's a jam for beginners. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I always wanted to get involved in, a slow jam. Hey, Alan, how about doing a slow jam? Oh, I sure, Mr. Stock. Okay. Well, <laughs> you've been listening to New Traditions. We're here every week on this channel at the same time, also at other times, on Mondays at... 2.30 in the afternoon, on Tuesdays at 10.30 in the morning, and on Thursday evenings at 10 o'clock at night. And it's called New Traditions. My host, Edgar Allan Poloforth, and myself, Michael Stock, would like you to tell everybody to send in your clothes so we could wear your 
t shirts. Hats, hats, shoes. Jackets. I, and, I need uh, a new jacket. And I'll even I'll even give you credit for it on the air. I've okay. got boxes of rock and roll t shirts, Michael. Now I know where to bring them. Oh, yeah. really? I give them to prisons. Hey. I, I'll Present. take any t shirt I can. Are we? I think we're ready for our theme. Our well, closing theme. Do we, can, do we have time for another one from. Well, how about, yeah, you want to play a song to take us out? Yeah. Let's play one together. Two minutes. We just we have about minutes. two minutes left. Can you left. do one in the key of D, by any chance? Sure. Yeah, you play it, and I'll just play along. I'll play rhythm. Yeah. Play it. Go ahead. I'll, now I'll we only have one minute, out. Michael. I'll sit this one out. One and a half minutes. Play. Everyone should be issued a banjo at birth. Right. <laughs> Except for Mr. Stott.